What's up, Glue Dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter, squeezing in one more DIY while I'm on my vacation for you guys before I head home. So this is why this background is not the usual background that you see in my videos. Tonight's DIY is going to be made of kitchen gadgets. I love to cook and I love kitchen gadgets. I don't know what it was, what it is with me and kitchen gadgets. I have so many, the poor drawer won't even close and stuff gets stuck and but I, I love kitchen gadgets. So not only to cook with, but apparently to make DIYs with. So tonight's DIY is a decorative kind of elegant wall sconce for you. And I'm really excited to show you how I made it. And I love the way it came out. So that makes me even more excited to show you how to make it. Before we get into it though, you know, of course I'm gonna ask you, I'd love for you to subscribe. We glue dots have a good time here, I must say. So if you wanna join the fun, hit the subscribe button wherever it is, on whichever site, and join us, we'd love to have you. Also, give me a thumbs up if you like the video, if you like my DIYs, if you like the craziness that you're seeing, I'd love the thumbs up and just give me a comment. Say hello. Tell me what you think of this, this nutso-ness that we, <laughs> we do over here. Alrighty, well, with all that being said, let's get right to this project of mine because I cannot wait to show you. Let's get it going here, glue dots. The first thing we're going to do is, there's a few steps to this. So <laughs> this ladle, actually, if you pull real hard and jiggle around, you might have to struggle with it a little bit. You're going to try and pull this handle off. And if you can, at the Dollar Tree, find the one that the handle comes off the easiest on. That would be a good thing. And I promise you, it does come off. Some are easier than others. But just jiggle and wiggle and keep trying and you'll get it off. Okay, see, I promise you they do come off. Some are easier than others. We don't really need the handle for anything. God only knows what I can come up for that sometime down the road. But their first step is going to be to take that handle off and then what we're going to do is go to the end of a table. What we're going to want to do is bend this piece so that it's at a 90 degree angle from the handle part. So the easiest way I found to do that is at the end of a table and put it, I hope you can see here, put it down and just bend. And once you get it kind of bent, you can get it off the end of the table and bend it the rest of the way. So there you have it. Our ladle is bent. Step two on this, or technically step three, is that we're gonna flatten out this piece. You so can, this actually has like a V shape to it. This piece is not flat. It's got like a little groove in here. And we are gonna go outside and hammer that flat. So because it's dark outside and I really can't show you that, the way that I found easiest to do it is to take the ladle um, or the spoon, whatever you want to call it, put it face down on the edge of a cement area. I tried it on wood and it didn't work well. So cement works better if you have a little wall outside or something or a brick or something you can put it on. And then you're just going to hammer it really hard on this back side all the way until you get this this piece to be completely flat. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. There you have it. Nice flat piece, no more groove in it. It just all flat. It gets a little bit beat up in the process, but it's really nothing to worry about because that's gonna be covered up. The next thing we're gonna do is take our two chopping, scraping, chopper scrapers and peel your labels off. Once you have the tags off of your chopper scrapers, you're going to take your mirror and find where you want to center it. You're going to take your bling wrap and you're going to have one piece that is three rows and one piece that is two rows. So decide whether you want the three rows at the top or at the bottom because you can't fit three rows on 
oh hi I'm in the mirror you can't fit the three rows together in there on both both ends so one will have two one will have three I'm gonna do my three rows at the bottom so I'm gonna move my mirror up a little bit higher and plan for my three rows of bling wrap to be at the bottom so if it helps you to make a marking to know where to glue your mirror that's fine um, there are also measurements actually on the chopper so you can use those measurements and help you to figure out where so what I'm going to be doing is you don't have to take off the foam from the back you don't have to take off the label because this mirror is going to be so well sandwiched in there it's really not going to make a difference so you can actually put glue on the foam and in various places around once you have the glue on there then you're going to slide it in place it on top of your chopper and slide it in as far as it will go against this side after that we're going to be doing the same thing but sliding it into this side as well so with this time what we're going to be doing is putting our ladle in or our spoon in as well so I'm going to add some extra glue not only to your chopper piece but also to the back side of your ladle or I keep calling it a ladle I think it's just a spoon poor little thing it's just a spoon <laughs> take your ladle place it inside of there place your mirror on top with your other piece and then press those together so that the mirror piece so it's pressed as far as it will go in so if you're looking at it from the inside here your mirror is as far as it will go here and as far as it will go here and then make sure like I said that your ladle your spoon holy moly your spoon is centered between the two and then you're also going to make sure that you have your mirror placed so that you can fit your bling wrap so as I said I'm doing my three rows on the bottom and my two rows on the top so the bling wrap you can purchase it in three rows from Dollar Tree or you can purchase it in five rows if you find it in five rows so I have it here in three rows and I'm cutting I have cut a piece or I'm going to cut a piece I should say the length of the mirror so we're going to be gluing this piece down so I think I'm going to use my E6000 for that as well so I've got my three rows of bling wrap on the bottom I'm going to cut my other piece of two rows which I've already pre-cut ahead of time and I'll be gluing that here on the top the same way that I glued the bottom piece okay I want to make sure everything is nice and secure so I'm gonna look at the back side and you see there's a space oh sorry there's a space there I'm actually gonna squeeze some E6000 in there just to make sure that everything stays secure and I may also put a little bit of hot glue in there too just for the the more immediate um, adhering because I don't want this to shift around when it's drying and get stuck in a position that I don't want it in. So if you are going to use your hot glue on that, make sure that everything is where you want it to be before you put that hot glue in because once that hot glue hits this whole cold metal, it's going to cool off really fast. Now what you want to do is clamp together these pieces while we work on our other pieces that'll give it a little bit of drying time I like to use these little binder clips or um, I think they're called binder clips paper clips binder clips from the Dollar Tree or wherever you can get them um, I got them at the Dollar Tree again make sure that everything's where you want it positioned before you clip this because once that E6000 dries boy you are done In the meantime, we're going to let this dry, and while we're letting this dry, 
I will be showing you the next step of what we're going to be doing. These little, if you have not seen these before, what they are is they are lobster claw clasps. They have a magnet as well as the little lobster clasp and what these are made for is to put on your necklaces or bracelets so that you don't have to use the clasp but you can just magnetize them together. What I like to use them for though is to hang embellishments so that I can easily attach and remove them from various items. So very simply you take your beautiful crystals or whatever you want to hang and just go ahead and open up that lobster claw and clasp it on there. So what's awesome about this is now you can use this to attach onto just about anything you want that is metal. So we're gonna make, whoops, <laughs> we're gonna make five of these, sorry, four of these because I have two sets of these lobster claws and there is a company that actually makes these um, they use these little magnetic things and they make all kinds of little hanging embellishments that you can change out on your chandeliers light fixtures or whatever you want and for the holidays or for various seasonal ideas or for different events. So that's what gave me the idea to do this. That company, it's a great concept, but those darn little guys are so expensive. Whereas using it this way, you don't have to continue buying all the different things. You can find your own little embellishments and clasp them onto one of those and you are ready to go. So also while this is drying, because it's clamped together, we're able to work with it a little bit. What I want to be doing is we have our little gemstones here, our acrylic gemstones. We're going to be attaching three together at a time so that they're sitting in this pattern right here. So we're just going to put a little bit of um, hot glue on each one. They do hot glue really nicely together so you don't have to worry about using the E6000 on that. And a little bit of glue up at the top is enough to attach. Whoops, try not to attach them to your table. So that's two of them attached and I'm going to go ahead and attach the third one to make my little triangle shape. Okay, we're going to make two of those and then we're going to be attaching those onto the top part of our wall sconce. So if you don't want to glue together the three gemstones in order to form this embellishment for the top, you can use one of these large ones that comes also in the pack that you can get at Michael's. It comes with several small ones and a several, well, a few large ones. They actually fit really nicely They actually fit really nicely in this project and they look beautiful. I prefer these. I went to three different Michaels and they were out of the gemstones and I don't have enough to do this project so that's why I decided to put three together and put them on there. Um, this is kind of what it looks like from the front with the three gemstones on there but the one really does look beautiful. Uh, on its own. So my preference and my first choice would be the individual large stone. So take your wall sconce, face it upward, and where these embellishments that we just made are going to be fitting in is right here on top in that hole. And we're going to glue it down and put glue only on the places that are actually making contact so it doesn't make a big ugly mess. I'm going to use my E6000 for that and place them and maybe just one little dab of hot glue so that it doesn't um, move around. And now we're going to let that dry thoroughly because these are definitely going to need some time to dry as is the rest of our piece. While we're letting this dry we can actually go ahead and attach 
the hook on the back. Now you have a couple options as far as the hook goes. You can use one of these types of hooks here, which you can get them at Dollar Tree in a kit, or if you have one already, that would work too. You can use one of the hooks that you remove from the back of any of your pictures, that, picture frames that you may have bought at Dollar Tree. Or the, the other option would be to use a command strip. So the command strips, if you haven't used them before, they come like this. You would take two of them and then you just simply attach them together like Velcro. These are so awesome. I love command strips. Attach them together like Velcro and then they have the adhesive sides. You put one adhesive side, peel it off and stick it to the back of your project and then peel the other piece off and take your project, well, peel the other piece off while it's stuck on there and stick your project wherever you want it on your wall. Now when you want to remove it they just velcro, the velcro comes apart and it comes off. So these things are really awesome. I am actually going to be gluing the hook on the back, the picture hanging hook on the back of mine because I like to move things around and I don't want to have to keep using up my command strips every time I decide I'm going to move it to a different place. So I highly recommend that you use the E6000 to glue this on as well as your hot glue just so that you can get the temporary hold from the hot glue but your permanent hold from your E6000. And attach it to the back of your project. And we're going to let this dry overnight and then I'll be showing it to you placed up on the wall. If you're enjoying my videos please hit the like button and also subscribe. I would love to have you join the glue dot family. It would really help out my channel so I can continue to bring this interesting and unusual content to you. So hang in there. Let's take a look and see what this is like on the wall. So here it is up on the wall. I really, really am happy with the way this came out. I just think it's so beautiful and so different. I mean, who'd have thunk that two choppers and a spoon could create such a beautiful, beautiful wall sconce. I want to show you really quick how these, how convenient these um, magnetic crystals are that you can rearrange them in any way that you choose to. If you want to put them on the outer edges, they just attach really easily. You can do whatever you want with them. If you want to take them all off or just even leave one, if you're a simple, what do you call it? A I'm not a simplicityist. <laughs> yeah, I'm making up my own words again. Anyway, a minimalist. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Or if you just want nothing on it, you know, if you like something a little cleaner looking and not so crystallized. Anyway, I hope you like it as much as I like it and as much as I enjoyed making it. And I hope you'll give it a try and make one yourselves as well in your own style and in whatever way that you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you all, Glue Dots. You're all amazing. Have a fabulous day.